there is in the blood of Jesus. And this communion service is our family service where we have our young people, the children, but it is also our youth fund. And we want to welcome every last one of you in the presence of the Lord. The Lord is already here doing amazing things amongst us. And if you doubt it, turn to your neighbor and see how they are glowing. Because the spirit of the Lord is with us this morning. I'll be asking our Pastor Jigerson to read for us the words of restitution shortly. But before that, just to remind us that the communion table is a time of reflection. It's a time to remember every promise. But it is also a time to appropriate every promise that Christ has taken out for us on that rugged cross. And therefore this morning, we don't just come because it's another Sunday, but because the Lord is already doing amazing things amongst us in Jesus' name. And therefore as we gather together, I pray that you will see the cross of Jesus and the victory thereof and the resurrection of the Savior even as we worship him this morning. Pastor Jai Gasson. scripture from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23. The Bible says, I have received of the Lord from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he, he, which he was to be betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after he had given thanks. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, partaking, partaking the supper and worthily. Therefore, whoever eats bread and drinks this cup of the Lord and worthily will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a man examine himself and so eat, uh, so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks damnation upon himself, not designing the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and unhealthy among you. And many die. If we who judge ourselves, we will not be judged. But when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord so that we will not be condemned with the world. So my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone hungers, let him eat at home so that you may come together. Not, you, you, you may not come together into condemnation. I will set the rest in order when I come. This is the table of the Lord Church and I would like all of us to bow our heads before the Lord. The Bible say, examine yourself so that you don't eat this, cup, this bread and drink this cup because it's going to bring condemnation upon you. It's going to bring a certain judgment on you. I just want you to keep quiet before the Lord and meditate upon the words that I've just read. Think of any sin that you might have committed before the Lord and go before the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me. Even before I take this cup and I eat this bread, forgive my sin. I don't want to drink judgment upon myself and my family or any person in my life. I just want you, Lord, we just come before you, Lord. We sacrifice ourselves. Just open up your mouth and speak the words to the Lord. Speak the words of confession. Say, Lord, this is your blood. This is your body which was broken for me. If you're right before the Lord, you can go ahead and thank him for the cross. And say, Lord, I thank you because of the blood that was shed for me. Lord, we stand in your presence. We stand before you, God, because, Lord, we know we are sinners and we are falling short of your glory. We are asking that you may forgive us and cleanse us from deep within us, O oh God. 
cleanse our actions. Cleanse, Lord Jehovah God, our attitude. Cleanse the thoughts that we have developed in our minds. We are asking Jehovah God, you may cleanse us from the relationship that we have had with our brothers, sisters, and the people who are close to us, oh God. Father, we might have said words that we should not have said, oh God. Forgive us and cleanse us by the precious blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. And lastly, every head bow before the Lord. If you're here and you know for sure you have never given your life to Christ. You have never even confessed Jesus Christ as your personal savior. This is a great opportunity. And maybe you don't even take the table of the Lord and also you don't drink from, his, from, from the, the cup of the Lord. I want to give you a chance to surrender your life to Jesus. Whether you are a child, whether you are an adult, all of us, God is calling us back to himself. If you're that kind of a person, I'm not going to ashamed you. You can lift your hand from wherever you are. I'm going to pray for you to get saved from wherever you are. If you're that kind of a person and you like to give your life to Christ, just lift your hand wherever you are. I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus. Just lift your hand. Don't be afraid. Whether you, whether it doesn't matter who you are, whether you are a child, just lift your hand wherever you are. I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless your name. And if you're there in the congregation, just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I know I'm a sinner who need a savior. Today, and confess that you are the Lord and the savior of my life. I give my life to you that you may save me from all sins. That I have committed. Today I'm a son and a child of God. In Jesus name I pray and I believe. Amen. The communion service is, uh, is not a ritual for Sitam but the communion table is for those that have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And just in case you made that prayer when Pastor Jigerson was making the prayer for us, you're also welcome to partake of the bread and the blood of Jesus. And because it is also our family service, we would request that the parents, you guide your children. If your child has the knowledge of the Savior and is born again, they're welcome to partake of the communion table. However, if they are young, very young, you can take care of that. And therefore, I invite us to experience the power of the resurrection even as we share the communion table together. The servers will be coming to us shortly. Kindly let us hold on to the cup and the bread together. Then we'll be able to partake at the end together. God bless you. The Comforter. On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and that old cross Where the dearest and best For a world 
took bread and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Let us take this bread in remembrance of the Lord. In the same manner, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Shall we take the cup together? We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the sacrifice on Calvary. We thank you for going for us. We thank you for dying on that rugged cross and taking our place where we were to be condemned. Today, we are the redeemed of the Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for taking the lashes. We thank you because of the sacrifice. We have the victory. We thank you for salvation. We thank you because the salvation we have through the blood of Jesus, the curse of sin is broken today. And as we gather together, as we celebrate that victory, Lord, we are grateful that we win. We are victorious over sin. We are victorious over the works of darkness. We are victorious over the every works of the flesh because of the sacrifice of Jesus. And because you have already done it for us, we give you the praise and the glory. And today we appropriate every blessing, every blessing of healing, every blessing of deliverance, every blessing of lifting. We pray this morning, Father, we will experience the blessing of Calvary together with our families in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we gather this morning, Lord, giving thanks to you, we pray together with winning, of a Hardy WM group whose father is unwell and admitted in Kenyatta National Hospital private wing. We remember Dorcas Njeri of a Hardy WM. Her mom is also unwell and admitted in Coptic Hospital. Father, we proclaim the healing of God upon these two in the mighty name of Jesus. You are a God who is the balm of Gilead and you're present wherever we are omnipresent. May you visit this once in those hospital beds, oh God. With your healing, with your compassion, stretch out your power, oh God, to their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. And you are a father who is not far removed from our sorrows and our pain. And this morning as a congregation, we remember Elizabeth Cater of Jerusalem SG and Tumaini WM, who has lost their mother. Father, we pray for this family. We pray for the entire family and many amongst us that could be having one need or the other. Father, you know your people by their names and by their addresses. By the time they came this morning in your house to worship, you know them. I pray that you reach out with your comfort to anyone that could also be having a bereavement and we may not be aware, oh God, because you know them. May you deliver your people, may you heal them, may you provide that every need that has been presented in your house this morning will be met by you because you are a good father. And therefore receive our praise even to the rest of the service. Be glorified and be exalted because you're God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on, celebrate the Lord all over this place. There is power in the redeeming blood of Jesus. And this morning as we gather in his presence, it is already done. Somebody say, it is already done. It's already done. It's a done deal in Jesus' name. And so our servers will come along the aisles. And I request that we pass the cups towards the aisles so that you'll be able to pick them up real quick. The Lord bless you.
the Lord because He is good. He is wonderful. He is merciful. He is loving. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome to today's service. Like we said before, this is April, the youth month, and you are most, most welcome. My name is Ashley Kendi Masilina, and I am joined by my co-moderator, Mark Musioka. Yes, and we are super, super excited because it's the youth month, and it's going to be a bit different from what we are used to. Something I'm usually excited about doing when I, like, I was thinking about it, and Pastor Purity, uh, Reverend Purity was here. You know, when you, when you have the opportunity to tell the congregation, please turn to your neighbor. That turn thing, to your neighbor. That thing fascinates me all the time. Like every single time when you want to turn to your neighbor, and maybe your neighbor is actually not even looking at you. I'm a, I'm a born that we are not But yes, we have the opportunity. Yeah? We use it wisely. We use it wisely. So, please turn to your neighbor and smile at them. Hi. Yes. Hi. Yes. Yes. Say hi to your neighbor. Ah, uh, yes. Today people are smiling. This, it's a good sign. It's a good sign. Okay, so first of all, we want to welcome our first-time visitors. Any first-time visitor in the building? Any first-time visitor? Looking, searching. Yeah, there's one. Please stand up even as we appreciate you. Please stand up at the back. Please, Karibu sana. Stand up. We appreciate you. Yes, don't feel shy. Don't feel shy. Just stand up. Thank you so much. Let's appreciate our visitor. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. So what do we tell our first time visitors, church? Church has come to an end. Yes, your search for a church has come to an end. And please, even as we finish the service, our reverend will be calling you. So please don't go because we want to have some time with you. And please, if you want to stay, you're most welcome to sit on Buruburu. And if you're going back to your church, say hi. And now we love them all. What is the next group of people that we would love the to appreciate? The next group of people are the April babies. April babies in the house. Can April you please babies? stand up? What? Please stand up. Please stand, stand up. Please stand up. Please stand up. Wow, our own pastor, youth pastor is there. I like it. Anniversaries is in April, please stand Anybody. up. Even the youths, the youths, youths. youths. Uh, we have Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to We want to make clear. Lord, to mewachia, mu mekuja in any design, but we beg that you, or we actually plead that you indulge with us. This month is going to be different. So, what is happening next Sunday? So, first of all, this whole month we'll be having dress codes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and next Sunday, it's the day for the boy child. So, the boy child, next Sunday, they've been given the privilege to lead the service. So, uh, they call themselves men of Adulam. Yes. In a so, Awu. 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 Adulam, Awu. 
Awako. <laughs> so if you'd like to join, you can see Owen. If you'd like to minister anywhere, you can see Owen for further direction. And Wamesomani Seme, they want a dress code. All black, sneakers, and a bandana. Please. Yeah. For everyone? For everyone. Yes. There'll be a search up at the entrance. Ashers watakuwa very, very strict. Next yeah. Sunday, please, you and your dress code. All black, sneakers, na bandana. Bandana, bandana design it. And young people will help you out. Remember, you can go to Kichwa, to Mkono. Feel free, feel free. But please, next time, you can go to the palace. So, yes, we expect that you'll be dressed up. And I think you can go to your best dress. You can go to the house. You can go to the house. Yes, so like we said, our theme for this month is Sparked for Power. And Mark, can you just tell me what you understand by the theme Sparked for Power? What I understand is... Uh, when someone is empowered by the Holy Spirit, uh, this is when he can discover his calling or his gifts and he can share with the world. Mm -hmm. And you, Kendi? Well, at first, the Leona 2 motto. <laughs> That's what I thought of. But I would say it's just living in the victory that Christ has called us to with the power that he has given us. Not living in the fear that the world may bring or the situations, but that power that he has called us to. And like we said before, uh, we wanted you to ponder on it. So, me and Mark, we're going to look for two people, or maybe even three, we don't know. We just want to hear, how, what do you understand when you hear the theme sparked for power? Please, and it's very see, random. Please. Maybe just look random. at me and smile at me, don't hide away. Yeah, as I'm smiling at you. Sparked for power, what do we understand? By I the found time. one, I found one. Ah, yeah. very nice. Thank you. Praise God, church. Amen. Um, when I hear spark for power, uh, it's like to, like Kendi has said, when you hear about spark, you think about spark, Jikoyamaka. Uh -huh. You think of spark, so I think it's like to radiate the power of God to others. Yeah. To radiate the power of God to others. Thank you, thank you so much. Let's find a gentleman, right? A gentleman, a gentleman, a gentleman. Nice, sir. I really love the color of your shirt. It is very nice. Can you just tell us what you understand with the theme Sparked for Power? Utapano in church. Um, when you, uh, you, you hear the word spark for power, I think it's um, filled with the power of Holy Spirit and updated in the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you so much. Filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Mark, just one more young person, because we have our children as well. It's our family service. A young person, a young yes, person. Yes, a young person. Oh, yes. I'm a Jitole. Ah, nice. Good morning, church. Good morning. Spark to power. Anything, anything that comes to mind. Spreading light to the world. Spreading light to the world. Come on, come on. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Asante ni sana. So yes, that is our theme and we ask that you may engage even as we experience God this month. Not, it's not just for young people as much as it's youth month. It's for every single person and that we may be charged for power. So I'd like to welcome the media team to roll the announcements. Hello and welcome to Sitamburuburu where we keep it Christ. It is Sunday the 7th of April which also happens to be the first day of Youth Month. My name is Owen Charles and these are the announcements for today. The new discipleship class is ongoing at grade 6B after every first service. Please register at the Huduma desk. All non-registered members intending to become members of Sitam Buruburu are invited to register for the membership class today after second service in the main sanctuary. 
Have you given your life to Jesus and have not gone through the New Believers class? You're kindly invited to join the new cohort that is ongoing at grade 6J from 8 a.m. Please sign up at the Huduma desk. We have embarked on a generosity initiative that we do believe over the next two years will help us to settle 23 of our SITAM assemblies in permanent residences. And we also do believe that over the last two weeks, you and your family have been praying together on what the Lord would lay in your heart so that you become part and parcel of this journey that together in SITAM we are walking. Now, each and every one of us can participate and we do urge every member of SITAM to participate, whether adult or youth or child, that no one be left behind as we move together in generosity. Some of us uh, indeed can give uh, much more than the 50,000 that we used as an example last time. Some of us uh, might only be able to manage a little less than that. But whatever it is uh, that each of us would make a commitment uh, that we are going to move together, not just 25,000 people, but every member of SITAM engaged in this initiative. Therefore, as we look ahead, today we are giving you a chance to make a commitment. And this commitment will be led through an app that we do believe will help each and every one of us both to track our giving and also to know how we are giving as individuals so that we are not left behind. Thank you for being part of the Together in Generosity campaign. A special downloadable app has been created to facilitate the process of registering your pledge and tracking your giving entirely from your mobile device. The registration process is simple. Once you've downloaded the app, follow the screen prompts to enter your name, your phone number, and your email address. Press Next and find your SITAM assembly in the drop-down menu. Create and confirm, password, and register. Next, select a monetary or in-kind pledge. Enter an amount and choose the redemption details. Don't forget to choose reminder options by SMS or email. Confirm your pledge and reminder details. You'll receive a confirmation message by SMS on the phone number you provided. There are various ways to redeem your pledge in the app. Select an installment amount and a convenient date each month on which you wish to be reminded to redeem your pledge. When you're ready to redeem the pledge or part of it, press Redeem and select one of the payment options provided, M-Pesa, PayPal, bank transfer, etc. Type in the amount and press Redeem. Follow the prompts to finish the payment. You will receive notification that your payment has been received. Download the app today. It's available in the Apple Store for iOS users and in Google Play Store for Android users. Name of the app is Setum Church. Do join us together as we move in this initiative together in generosity. God bless you. The Children Ministry would like to invite the parents of the children who have received the gift of salvation recently and have not gone through the New Believers class to a short meeting today after the first service at the dining hall. The New Believers class will begin on 14th of April. The SITAM Southern Region presents the Youth Conference for all teens and youth. Mark your calendars for the 17th to the 19th of April 2024 at SITAM Karen with the hashtag Youth Takeover. Feel at home in God's presence with power-packed worship, anointed ministry and top-notch sessions. Koso Chekwe. We kindly appeal to the congregation to donate dry food stuff such as grain, cooking oil, rice, sugar, and salt to feed the needy among us. You can drop off your gifts at the office during the week or on Sundays at the Massey Basket drop-off point. Your kind contribution will go a long way to feeding a family. We are pleased to announce the first reading of the bands of marriage between Raphael Mwenda and Gloria Gerop to be held on the 26th of April, 2024 at Sitam Karen from 11 a.m. 
we are pleased to announce the second reading of the bans of marriage between Collins Muduya Vita and Zephros Minayo to be held on the 27th of April 2024 at Sitam Karen from 11 a.m. We are pleased to announce the second reading of the bans of marriage between Dominic Dandacha Huka and Jilo Dida Karayu to be held on 20th of April 2024 at Gororukesa Sitam Missions from 11.30 a.m. We are pleased to announce the third and final reading of the bans of marriage between Givan Eshula Anungo and Stephanie Nasenya Kwavi to be held on 13th of April 2024 at Sitam Buruburu from 11 a.m. Should there be anyone with a just cause why these couples should not be wedded in a holy matrimony, please present it to the senior pastor before the wedding date or forever hold your peace. So our Trade Fair 2024 is here with us. Uh, bigger and better. The date is 14th of April, the second Sunday of April. We are inviting the small enterprises. We are inviting the corporates to just come here and showcase uh, part of what you do because Sitam Buruburu is known for the big business. Our community, the business community is quite large here at Sitam Buruburu. The costs... Small enterprise, 5,000. You can book medium enterprise, 10,000. Large enterprise, 15,000. The corporates will be paying 20,000 to showcase what you have with us. Just sign up at the Hoduma desk with our CBF community team and we'll be able to enlist you even for the great day. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the 14th of April. That has been the bulletin for today. I'd like to give a special thanks to our media team. I also want to leave you with a verse from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, which says, Do not let anyone look down upon you just because you are young, but set an example for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. My name is Owen Charles, and have a great Sunday. Thank you, thank you kindly. Let's appreciate our media team for the good job. Thank you, media team. Uh, emphasis on the new members class. It will be here immediately after the second service. Uh, I would like to welcome Pastor Purity with an important notice. Give her a clap as she comes. Welcome her, thank you. Thank you, Candy and Mark. Let's appreciate our moderators for the day. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, this is the youth month. We need to feel some energy. Amen. So today marks the beginning of our youth month. And if you're next to a young person, give them a high five. I, I know some of you are doing high five, you're young at heart, it's okay. But we really want to appreciate the, the youth, the young people, the teens, and the YPs, and the 1925 team, led by our very own Reverend Karo Kyogora. Let's appreciate our pastor and the team, the entire leadership, the young people, the leadership. And, and the music ministry from the youth church, they, didn't they do an amazing thing? Let's appreciate our young people. Amen. That is the now church. We thank God for every last one of them. And this month, we will be doing things differently. Just for your information and future preparation. And so we thank God for you, Pastor, and the team. And we pray that this will be a great time of worship even this month as the young people speak to our lives in Jesus' name. So, just to belabor a few announcements. Number one, together in generosity. Somebody to say together in generosity. This is from our bishop's office. The presiding bishop of Christ is the answer ministries, Reverend Kalisto Odede, on behalf of the entire leadership. Uh, God has led us as a ministry to, to ensure that Besides Sitam Buruburu having an intercooler, the rest of the churches that are intense like us will also be able to move to um, 
good sanctuaries and places of worship to the glory of God. And we are calling this campaign Together in Generosity. Like the clip has already notified and educated us. I want us to get us um, get out our smartphones. I know that in Kenya, the statistics show that your neighbor has at least three smartphones. One for M-Pesa, the other one for calling the village, and the other one for corporate affairs. So I know you have your phones. So let's go. If you have Apple products, you can go to the App Store. If you're using the Android, you can go to the Google Play. And uh, I have allowed you to take out your phones. So we are taking out our phones. And you're clicking there, search Sitam Church. Sitam Church. And you'll see two Sitams, one from CBF, but we are talking about together in generosity. I want you to download that app, and then you follow the prompts. In other words, just key what you're being asked and follow through to the end until you make your pledge. Like our bishop said, whatever gift you give will not be small because the Lord sees the heart and the desire to support this kind of initiative. However, we desire that as many of us, over 25,000 of us will be able to give that 50,000 annually in the next two years and we'll be able to, in the next two years, we'll be able to move all our churches that are in tents to proper sanctuaries, but at the same time, be able to plant new churches in Jesus' name. So if you did not carry a smartphone, you, you carried a katululu, like Pastor Jaigason calls it, you, we have an option. Out there at the Hoduma desk, we have envelopes, we have sign-up uh, forms, and our team out there will be able to help us even to sign up and register for the same. We have our elder Evans Gekonyo, who is going to lead this initiative at here at Sitam Buruburu, because we, every assembly is forming task forces. So we, at least five to seven, and our elder will be leading that initiative. The trainings have already begun, and we, are, we trust the Lord that we can hit that target even before the next two years. Don't you think it is possible? Because silver and gold belongs to our God. How many of us are going to be part of this campaign in building? Amen. This service, wow. Pastor Carol, Pastor Jaigason, I can encourage you, second service is almost 100% conversion. Amen. Thank you so much even as you uh, go ahead and do that. At this point, I want to call, um, I want to call G G uh, Jivan and Stephanie as I read the announcement for the ADC, let them come. I'll be praying for them as soon as I'm done with reading the ADC notice. Let's appreciate these ones, Givan and Stephanie. These ones have served ably amongst us and lo and behold, they also saw each other. Can we celebrate our young people? Great people in, in my ministry. Amen. Amen. Notice of the annual delegates conference notice is here by given that the annual delegates conference that is the ADC for Christ is the answer ministries will be held on Saturday the 27th of April 2024 from 8.30 a.m. at Sitam Valley Road that is at the Dennis White Hall and this shall be a hybrid meeting with members attending either in person or virtually through a Zoom link which will be circulated to the delegates prior to the meeting. All delegates are encouraged to attend in person. Uh, just to emphasize that this is for delegates that have been appointed. It is not for every registered member. Agenda, prayer, and devotion. Reading of the notice convening the meeting. Welcome and introduction of the delegates. Confirmation of minutes of the annual delegates conference held on 29th of April, 2023. Matters arising from the 29th April 2023 ADC minutes, the chairman's report and its adoption, consideration of the audited accounts for the year ended 31st December 2023, appointment of auditors to the ensuing year, election of deacon board members, ratification of appointed elders, 
any other business for which notice shall be received by the church secretary at least seven days prior to the ADC. All AOBs can be sent to admin at citam.org. Kindly note, all elected delegates are invited and entitled to attend. And CITAM audited accounts and yearly reports are available for Peruso in the ADC documents bundle circulated through the provided link. This is under the signature of Deacon Martin Munyu, who is the church secretary. Just to notify us, that is the first notice, and we'll be having subsequent notices till the day happens. Also to remind us that our membership class that was already mentioned will be happening right here, and for those who uh, did baptism, kindly pick your certificates after the service. Let's hear the voice of these people. Good morning, church. Good afternoon, sorry. <laughs> My name is Stephanie Nasenya Kwavi. Yes. Praise God, church. My name is Given Shula. I'm blessed to be here. Thank you. Let's appreciate them one more time and thank the Lord for them. You can hold your hands as I pray for you. Let's pray. Just stretch your hands. Let's pray for these ones. Father, we thank you for Stephanie and Given. We thank you because you're a good father. You are a God who has ordained marriage and family. And Father, we pray for these dear ones, O oh God, that as you have blessed them to come together in this way, even to have a family, may your blessing abide with them. We declare your kingdom upon them, O oh God. We pray that you provide for everything they need for this great day. In the name of Jesus, may you preserve and watch over them. Master, may you make their day glorious. But also we pray that into marriage you will honor them with your goodness, with children, with wealth, with long life that is fruitful. But also they will continue serving you and to bring you glory as a family. We commend them to you and pray for their great day that God you will show up in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit we pray. Congratulations once again on behalf of the whole church. Are we invited? God bless you. Amen. And we also congratulate the rest of the couples that are having their weddings in a few days' time and pray that God will see them through. Thank you. Thank you. Let's appreciate Reverend Purity. Thank you so much. And it is time to give. It is time to give. So we will be giving our tithes and offerings as we pray and get the clip. Also, uh, our worship team will be coming on stage to give us a special. And after that, our very own youth pastor, Pastor Caroline Kyogora, will be coming to give us the word. So let's appreciate her in advance. Then before she comes, please. Yes, thank you so much. So uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. We say thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you because you're good and you're wonderful. Thank you because, dear Lord, you've called us to a time whereby we are called to get sparked uh, for power, Jehovah, my Father. And we ask that, dear Lord, may you speak to us. As we give, my Father, oh God, we ask that you may bless us, my Father. Bless the work of our hands. For those who lack, my Father, we pray for provision in the name of Jesus. And Heavenly Father, oh God, in everything that we do, oh God, even in our giving, oh God, may all glory and honor be unto your name. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we have been your moderators. My name is Ashley Kenny Maselina. And my name is Mark Musioka. Worship team. Here at Sitamburu Buru, we have different ways of giving. You may simply drop your offering in the offering baskets. You may pay via our M Pesa payable number 933945, and the account name is Tithe Offering or Thanksgiving. You may also swipe your Master or Visa card on our PDQ machines at the main exits or by reaching out to our ushers dressed in red jackets. And last but not least, you can draw a check in favor of Christ's Answer Ministries and in Indicate Buruburu at the back of the check. Giving is part and parcel of our worship experience.
from the blood It never fails Saving power comes from the blood It flows eternally Healing power comes from the blood
of the Lord. One more time we can celebrate the Lord with a shout of praise. Just remain standing. when you want to young at heart, it's okay. <laughs> Would you want to appreciate the young people who are in the house today? I think we can give a better appreciation for our young people. Amen, 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 amen. It is a joy to serve as young people. So we appreciate the parents for allowing us to serve in the youth church, but also giving us permission to come and serve here. We thank God for the leadership that has allowed us to come and serve in this month. So as we serve, please allow us to be young, allow us to be youthful, allow us to make the service a bit more youthful. Uh, so accommodate us. So as we are talking about dress codes, mutafinya tu budget kidogo, mutafute black, yakuva next Sunday, na sneakers, um, if you have sneakers, if you have a young person next to you, you can just ask them, sneakers ni nini, uwelewe too, so that next Sunday, <laughs> you make sure you are in some sneakers, and, and, uh, and black attire, 
you know like what they are wearing some of them ebu wanyo wameva sneakers wa smami hapa hivi mbele waonekane vizuri kina solo hapa kina jeda ni aiza aizo yeah eh kama kitu kama hiyo kitu when you come to the youth church and you are wearing some nice shoes like this one they will tell you your shoe game is good iko correct sindio all right let's appreciate our young people as they take their seats in the house of the lord I hope you are happy to be in the house of the Lord. I hope you are happy to be in the house of the Lord. Amen, amen. Just a few updates on what has been happening in the in the youth church. We have a lot that we have been doing as a youth ministry and just one of the things this uh the last two months we have had a program for the ex-candidates those who've completed for four uh last year and we've have we've been with them the last two months and last week we had gone for camp with them in Limuru and we had an amazing time in the presence of God. I mean the the Holy Spirit just came down and ministered to us in an amazing ways. Um in one of the sessions we were supposed to be going for tea break but because of the um how the Holy Spirit was just ministering to us we couldn't go for tea break because the presence of God the move was of God was among us us and we thank God for every young person that has given their lives to the Lord in the recent past almost every other sunday we've had young men young women giving their lives to the Lord and we praise the Lord for every work that has been done we thank God and praise the Lord for every one of you for supporting the young people for allowing them uh, for granting them permission to be part of the programs that we have in the youth church we thank god for every one of you and in this month as we minister as we serve we pray that the lord will move in our midst we are trusting that there will be great things that by the time we are going back to our youth services right there in the multi purpose hall we will leave a great impact in our midst in the name of jesus we also have a conference a youth conference coming up it's been announced we have transport for all our young people so if you have a young person make sure they have registered at the huduma desk uh, so that we are we, uh, we ensure that we have planned for their transport it will be first come first serve we may not be able to accommodate the over 500 young people that we have with the buses that we have but we are also asking parents who can be able to ferry their children to sit am karen please do that so that we can be able to facilitate the ones that are completely not able to raise fare to sit am karen the 3 days that we will be in sit am karen we have great things lined up ahead we have our ro reverend munene who will be ministering we have a a former senior pastor reverend jesse mwai who will also be ministering among other young ministers that will be there we have great things lined up and we will be taking over Over. that is our theme for that conference and we are excited and looking forward come on let's appreciate the lord for every thing that is happening in the youth ministry amen amen and so we can turn to the scriptures in second timothy chapter 1 verse 6 to 9 which is our scripture our theme verses are drawn from that particular book um for this whole month we will be making references to those three verses 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 6 to Eight. and this is what the scripture says that is second timothy chapter 1 verse 6 to 8 for this reason i remind you to fan into flame the gift of god which is in you through the laying on of my hands for god did not give us a spirit of timidity but a spirit of power and of love and of self discipline so do not be ashamed to testify about our lord or ashamed of me his prisoner but join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God and father we pray that may our hearts be fertile ground for your word in Jesus name and this letter is a letter by Paul to his young mentee Timothy and uh, there are many things that that Paul needed to remind Timothy about as a young minister serving in the church having planted a church and Paul having planted the churches and Timothy having been left behind by Paul to lead the church um he uh, Paul writes this letter to him at this at the time he writes the letter he was actually in prison knowing 
and awaiting execution. He knew he's just about to die and he needed to write some great inspirations and encouragement to his young mentee. And one of the things that he knew, because he knew the young man, um, uh, Timothy, and knew some of the struggles that he had, he needed to write for him specific things concerning his ministry and concerning his life as a minister, as a believer, things that we can apply, that apply to all of us even today. And so at that time when, Tim, when Paul is writing this letter, he's very passionate about the letter he's writing. When you read the whole of uh, First Timothy and the whole of Second Timothy, you, 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 you actually are able to get the passion that Paul writes with. Though all his letters he writes with a lot of passion and a lot of encouragement. Uh, but Timothy has to hold on to these words because these are the final words from his mentor. Because when, when someone is writing the last words to you, almost like a will to you, that this is what I want you to do when I am gone. He holds on to those words very passionately. And, and so we'll be looking at that and, and remembering that all scripture is God-breathed. All scripture is important for preaching the word. And Paul, knowing that his departure was at hand, Timothy needed to understand that whatever he continues to do, he needs to do it in a certain way. And so as we are talking about being sparked for power throughout this month, we just want to bring to us to attention the fact that all of us as believers, the Lord is calling us to ensure that we are fanning into flame the gift of God that has been put in us. Because once we have surrendered our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God comes upon us. And there are certain things that every one of us as a believer is assigned to do. There is a divine assignment for every one of us. And so today I just want to remind us that it is important for us to keep fanning into flame that gift of God that is upon you. And so as believers, there are three Three things that we must understand, even where the gifts of God are concerned concerning our lives. And those three things include, one is anointing. The anointing of God operating over your life as a believer. Having surrendered your life to the Lord, there's an anointing of God that rests upon you that you are able to do certain things that you are not able to do. You are able to proclaim certain things in confidence and in courage that you are not able to do before. You are you're able to operate even on a different level. Maybe previously you had a lot of fear and anxiety and all that. But after that, when the power of God has rested on you, when the Spirit of God has convicted you and you have believed in your heart and you have surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ and pro proclaimed and declared with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, there is an anointing that rests upon you, that wherever you go, you are able to do exploits for the kingdom of God. And so even as we talk about fanning to flame the gift of God, I want you to understand that every one of us has a gift. Gifts are not just the things we see everyone else doing, the ones that are are, are public and, and speaking in tongues and what have you, there, there is an assignment. When we talk about the gift here, we are not just talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the ones that are mentioned in Corinthians and Romans. We're not just talk talking about those ones. We're not just talking about speaking in tongues. We are talking about the uh, divine assignments that are, that is there for every one of us because there is a divine assignment. And so the anointing. And then secondly, authority. Once you surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who begins to live in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And so when we are talking about finding the, the, the gifts of, uh, in our lives to flame, it is important for us to be reminded that as Christians, as believers, there is an authority by which we must operate. You must not be afraid to proclaim and declare certain things because God has given you the power and authority to declare layer over those things. God has given you an assignment and with that he has given you. In him, in him we live and in him we move. And it is in him that lives in us, that gives us the authority and the grace to command things and they will be able to move. And that is why in faith we can be able to speak to a mountain and it will move. That is why in faith we can be able to pray for sicknesses and they will be healed. That is why in faith because of the one that lives in us we can be able to declare that there is no weapon that is fashioned against us and for sure it will not prosper against us because the authority that has been given to us is the one that is operating and that authority comes from Jesus Christ. Christ and so fan into flame that gift with the authority 
and with the anointing. But lastly, remembering that there is spiritual power in your hands. There is spiritual power in your hands. In that, you can't just live the same way everybody else is living. You can't just be complacent in the way you live. You must understand that there is a power that is in your hands. That you are able to pray for the sick and they can get healed. Many a times we pray for people and sometimes we have, we, we have no faith at all. And yet we just need some little faith. Just some little faith. As little as a mustard seed is all that we need. When we understand that there is spiritual power in our hands. Then we can be able to lay our hands on the sick. You don't just have to wait for the pastor to come and lay their hands on the sick. While it is important for the, uh, for the elders and the pastors to come, it is also possible for you to do it because the Lord has put spiritual power in your hands. And so as we talk about uh, being sparked for power this month, we are talking about, is it, we, are, we are reminding ourselves that there is spiritual power in our hands. And we must not take that lightly. We must take it with understanding and run with it and take the territories that God requires of us to take with the understanding that there is power in our hands. Somebody say amen. And Paul, having understood that there were many struggles that Timothy would have, he needed to remind him a few other things. He told him, you know, as, as you're finding this gift into flame, it is important for you not to be afraid. But also in other scriptures within Timothy, he tells him, uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14, he tells him, do not neglect the gift you have, which was given by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Once again, reminding him there is a gift in your life. It was given to you and it was not given to you to be dormant. It was given to you so that it can be active, so that it can be used for the, you know, for the edification of the church. And that's why we must not neglect the gifts that have been given to each one of us. Um, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 11, all the way, uh, the scripture tells us, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you are Gentiles carried away to these damned idols. However, you are led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a cast, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And Paul reminds us in Corinthians again that it is important for us as a church, as a body of Christ, not to be ignorant. It is important for us to understand those gifts that have been given to us so that we can operate in them. So that when the Holy Spirit is stirred in us, we can be able to activate them and use them for the edification and for the glory of the Lord. But many other times, certain things come our way. Some things happen along the way on our journey of faith, and then we just allow the fire to die down. We allow, instead of fanning the gifts, the, the flame to fire, we allow the fire to dwindle down. We allow the fire to, you know, to just go out. But I, we, just keep to, we, we, we need to keep being reminded that the fire must not go out. For those of us who have grown up in the village, like myself, and understand um, using firewood in a jiko, the three stone kind of jiko. Um, when you put firewood, you have to ensure you keep ensuring that uh, you keep adding more firewood so that it keeps glowing, so that the fire keeps burning. Now that's the same thing with our lives as Christians. If we don't keep doing something, if we don't keep adding some firewood to our lives, and we'll be saying and talking about what some of the things that we need to do as Christians to ensure that the fire is burning in us. But if we don't keep doing certain things, the fire will go down. And I just want to take us through some of the things that happen in our lives that we allow the fire to die down. And one of the things is that we start doing the work of the Lord in our own flesh. We allow the flesh to take charge. When we, the moment we gave our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, we were depending on the Lord. Because most of us at the time when we surrendered our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, there was a certain love. There was a certain energy for the things of God. You would meet with people around and the first thing you would tell them, Bado ni meokoka, yesu ni buwana. But then at some point, 
we stop depending on the Lord. We stop even having a testimony concerning our walk with Jesus Christ. We are even afraid of saying that I am born again. At the workplace, we, we don't even want to be associated with any Christian thing. We don't, when, when people are looking for someone to pray for, before a meeting begins, you don't even want to be the first one to lift up your hand. You just want to hide under the table because you've gotten complacent with your faith. You've, got, you've stopped depending on God the way you used to. You're now doing things in the flesh. Walking in the flesh makes the fire go down. When we become too familiar with the Lord, the fire goes down. Just because you've been, you've been with Christ and you've been walking with the Lord for a long time doesn't mean you should not keep fanning the, the flame into fire. Just because you have walked with the Lord for 10 years, for 20 years, for 5 years, for 6 years, you can name the number that which you have walked with the Lord. Doesn't mean you should become too familiar with the presence of God. Because when we become familiar with the presence of God, even that which mattered most stops mattering a lot. And that is why even when, when the message to the churches and to the church of Ephesus and, 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 and Jesus is congratulating them for every good work they had been doing, but he is rebuking them for one thing and tells them, you have fallen far away from the first love. That is what happens when we fall away from the first love. The Lord will rebuke us. The Lord will spit us out because we've become complacent, because we've become lukewarm, because we've stopped depending on him. We have walked away from the first love. The fire dies down. The moment you walk away from the first love, the moment you stop being excited about the things of God, the fire for, uh, dwindles away. One of the other things that Paul talks about in that particular scripture, he talks about fear. And because he understood how Timothy, in how he operated, apart from just talking about the fear in this particular portion of scripture, in another instance, he tells him, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to do what you need to do. As a young person, ensure you continue using your gift in the house of the Lord. Just because you are young, don't allow anyone to look down upon you. And sometimes when fear comes in, we allow the voices of people to speak so loudly in our lives that even the assignments that God gave to us, it's like we just forget and we put it away. We put away the, the very assignment that was given to you by God himself because of fear. You are afraid. What will people think of me? What will people say about me? What will they talk about me after this? What will happen after this? When I do this, when I say this, when I speak that prophetic word, what will happen? Will I interrupt the service? What will happen? And then you just allow, you just allow the fear, the voice of the enemy to lie to you and it takes root in your life. And then the fire dies down. Fear can cripple us. Fear can cause us not to fan into flame the gift of God that is in us. But today I just need to remind us that we cannot operate in fear. Because the spirit that the Lord has given us is a spirit of power, is a spirit of love, is a spirit of sound mind. And that power has to be seen in our operation in our own lives. Fear cripples us. Sometimes opposition comes our way. And we allow the voices of everybody to take part of our lives and to take root in our lives. Like Nehemiah, you know, in the story of Nehemiah, we see that the Sanballat and we see Ton, uh, Tobias also rising up as, as Nehemiah is rebuilding the wall, the broken wall. They begin to speak and they begin to say, even the fox will bring down this wall. Even the fox will bring down this wall. Just imagine with me, you're building a wall, a serious wall. And then someone is saying out there, even the fox will bring it down. I mean, you would be discouraged. But if you remain fanning into flame the gift of God, like Nehemiah did, that he remained in the place of prayer. He still had his weapons against his, his, his opposers, but he remained in the place of prayer. He fanned into flame the gift that God had given him. He understood the assignment that was over.
over his life and he did not allow opposition to take part and to destroy the work that he was doing. Sometimes we allow the voices of the enemy. Sometimes we allow people who are speaking, you know, very sarcastically concerning the things we've been doing. You know you have this grand vision. You have this great vision that the Lord has given you and you're putting it together. You're giving the details and then someone just begins to say, this will not work. And then you allow that voice of the enemy to take root and then the fire goes down. The vision that you are given by God, you just allow it to die down. You just allow it to die off. The other thing that happens that our passion will weaken is neglecting our own relationship with God. Neglecting our own relationship with God and not taking care of our soul. Sometimes we become so busy with everything around our lives and we forget to prioritize our relationship with God. Sometimes we become so busy with the things that God has given us and we forget that from the beginning, actually, it was God who gave us these things. That even those jobs that we have that, have, that have, are making us so busy, that even in the morning when you wake up, you don't even have time that you can open your scriptures or you can kneel down beside your bed and just tell the Lord, I need you for this day. I need your guidance. You begin to neglect your walk with God. You begin to, you know, you stop praying. You stop reading the word of God. You stop fellowshipping with others. You just neglect the relationship with God and then your fire dies down that you used to sing you used to lead worship and people would begin to get healed when you are leading worship but because the job has taken priority because the things that God has blessed you with have taken priority you neglect even the gift that God has given you the Lord opened the door for you and then you forget that it was actually the Lord and with the Lord you keep you, you need to keep rekindling your relationship with God you prayed for a job and the Lord opened a door and you got a job Within a few months, you got a promotion and you understood very clearly that promotion comes not from the east or the west. Promotion comes from the Lord himself and you allowed that to just take charge and you forgot that God was the one that opened the door for you. My goodness, time is over. <laughs> but you neglect your relationship with God. Other things that take us away from the fire, from finding the fire into flame, is that we allow ourselves to get distracted by the concerns and the cares of the world. The scriptures in Matthew tells us it is important to ensure that the cares of this world don't choke that which has been put and planted in your heart. It is important that even as you are concerned about what to eat and what to wear and what to drink, it is important that you allow, you don't allow those cares and those concerns to choke your life. Don't allow them to choke your life. The other things that, that make our, our fire die down is a lack of love for other people. That you loved the Lord and because of how much you loved the Lord, you love the people as well. You are con so concerned about their welfare. You are so concerned whether they are, we are all going to heaven. You are so concerned whether they are born again like you are. But at some point you stop being so concerned. You stop preaching the gospel. You stop even texting your parents about the word of God and reminding them that the Lord loves them and you know for sure they are still not born again. You used to pray for your brother, for your sister, for your auntie but at some point you stopped doing it because you stopped finding into flame the fire of God in your life. But lastly, a love for secret sins in our lives. The sin that so easily entangles. The one that we begin to do every day. And we take the grace of God for granted. And we just say, ah, I will just, I will do this. And then tomorrow I will go and pray. And I will ask God for forgiveness. Because anyway, his grace is sufficient. Anyway, he loves me. And his love endures forever. He will forgive me. You forget that in Romans it says, should you continue to sin so that grace may abound. You forget that even in Jude, he warns us. He tells us that as I'm writing to you, you need to be very careful about the people who have crept in who have sneaked in into the congregation that are taking the grace of God for granted, that have used the grace of God as a license to be immoral, we forget. And then we continue to live in sin. We have made it a habit 
Just because everybody else cannot see you does not mean God cannot see you. Just because everybody else cannot see you does not mean you will not be accountable to the Lord. You will be accountable to the Lord. But it is important for us not to take the grace of God for granted. It is important for us not to use the grace of God as a license to go and keep sinning. It is important for us to arise and say no to the enemy because in this day, the scripture will tell us that he has given us the grace to say no and you are able to say no even to temptations when they come your way. But as we wind up, what then must we do to ensure that we keep being sparked for power, that we keep remaining, you know, powered up, we keep being fired up? How do we ensure that we are fired up for the things of God? And one of the things that we must keep doing is that we must keep longing for the presence of God. There must be a genuine hunger and a genuine thirst in our hearts that we long for the Lord. It is important that the way you longed for the Lord from the time when you gave your life to the Lord Jesus, it is important for you to still hunger for the Lord in the same manner. The way you longed for the Lord when you are praying for that job, for that business to be expanded and the Lord made it happen, it is important for you to ensure that you keep longing for the Lord in the same measure. It is important as Psalm 42 says, as a deer pants for the streams of waters, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? It is important that even in this year when we are taking new territories, it is important as a church that we long for the presence of God, that we don't just remain comfortable, we just don't remain in the shallow end, but we keep longing for the Lord. That like the psalmist, we will be able to rise up and say, as a deer longs for the streams of water, so my soul longeth after thee. And if you long for the Lord in such a manner, you will feed on the word of God. You will remain in the place of prayer consistently, but you will also be worshiping the Lord in the truth and in the spirit. It is important for us to keep longing for the presence of God. Because when there is a longing, when there is a cry from within you, a desperate cry for the move of God, the Lord will come. Because he says, when you call unto me, I will come. As you seek me, I will reveal to you great and mighty things that you know nothing about. So secondly, is feeding on the word of God. And thirdly, is remaining consistently in the place of prayer. In Psalms 119 verse 103 says, Excuse me. How sweet are your words to my test, sweeter than honey to my mouth. This is what the word of God says in Psalms 119. And the whole chapter in Psalms 119 talks about loving on the word of God. What is the taste of the word of God? As you read the word of God, is it still as tasty as it used to be from the beginning when you started walking with the Lord? Is the word of God still as tasty? You know, I, I was saying in the earlier service, for those of us who come from Cumberland and we understand how honey tastes it is so sweet when you think about the scripture talking about the word of God in this manner it is important for us to have such kind of a taste that the word of God will be sweeter to us than honey in the name of Jesus are you still hungry for the word of God or did your bible you know does your bible already have dust you don't even remember where it is because you became complacent because you lack in zeal because you stopped loving the Lord the way you used to and you just stopped reading the word of God it is important for us to feed on the word of God. It is important that the word of God will burn in us uh, in, in a great way that we just want to release it in every place that we go. If we are to remain sparked up for power, it is important for us to feed on the word of God. Somebody say amen. And then thirdly, we must consistently remain in the place of prayer. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. This is what the scripture says. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And we can read other scriptures in, in, in James chapter 5 verse 16 says, The honest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. The Thessalonians also will tell us to, that we should continue praying without ceasing. Remain consistent in the place of prayer. Even when God has come through for you, 
even when God has answered that prayer, it is important that you still prioritize. Early in the morning, rise up and pray and seek the face of the Lord while he can still be found. Early in the morning, rise up and pray. Over lunch hour, take some time and pray. The way you used to go to the prayer mountains to pray and fast, ensure that you don't become complacent even with the things of prayer. It takes work to just pray, but it is important for us to ensure that we are ignited. The fire in us is ignited through the place of prayer because if we are to operate in this power that the Spirit of God is talking about, because when we are talking about power in this particular portion of Scripture, we are talking about dunamis, the kind of power that is constructive power, the kind of fire that will burn everywhere and we will see a great move of the Lord, that the revival that we used to hear in the past will be revived and will happen in this day. So as we remain in that place of prayer, it is important, it is important that we are consistent at it. And lastly, stay at the altar. Because when you stay at the altar, the Lord will remind you how to live your life. The Lord will remind you the promises he made to you. Because as you continue with your life, and as I talked about certain distractions, as you stay at the altar, you will be connected to the Lord. Because he is the source of power. There is no other source of the power that we are talking about. It is from the Lord himself. And as you remain at the altar, as you remain as a sacrifice at the altar, in Leviticus chapter 6, the priests were told the fire in the temple should not go out. And so constantly they ensured they were at the temple so that the, the fire that was lit at the altar always was burning all the times. But now we don't live in that dispensation where we light fires on the altar. But you are the altar of the Lord. You are, you are supposed to light the altar of worship in your own life. You're supposed to ensure that there is the fire of prayer burning in you. That the word of God is burning in you. That as you lift your voice in song that people will get healed as you're singing. Whether it is, it doesn't matter whether you are gifted like the worship team or not. But the things that you are doing because you have the power of God in you. Remaining at the altar. Drinking from the altar. Drinking from the cup of the Lord. Taking that which the Lord is giving unto you. As he's filling your cup, you ensure that you're doing exploits for the Lord. And in this month, as we talk about being sparked for power, we are staying. We are saying we want to stay at the altar and we want you to partner with us. We are trusting God for a move in our generation. In the generation, in generation Z as well. That there will be a revival. I was telling the earlier service uh, that I have heard people, the older generation tell me when we used to serve in the CU, we used to see great and mighty things happening. What happened? Are those things still happening today? You are asking and we are constantly condemning the generations today. But unless we rise up and pray, where will the revival come up? Because we've got to pass on the baton. These young people are looking unto you. They are looking unto you and trusting that you will hold on and stay at the altar with them. Feed on the word of God with them so that they will be able to experience the move of God. Do we have some people who are saying, I will be among the number that will partner with this generation so that generation after generation we will see the move of God. If you are there and you are saying, I want to be part of that movement of revival. Would you rise up on your feet and we are rising up to the Lord and just telling the Lord, I am here. As you are looking for one to touch with your fire, as you are looking for one to pass the baton to a young person, that the fire of God will light upon their lives, that they will be vibrant in their work with God, that they will love the Lord, that they will long for the Lord in their hearts, that we will not just keep condemning them, but there will be a fire and a revival. Come on, open your mouth and just tell the Lord, I am here Lord, use me in whichever way allow me to just minister the word of God, that as the young people are trusting in that move as they are being sparked for power that even us, we shall be among the number, but also the things we have seen you do in the days past we will see them in the lives of our young people, in the mighty name of Jesus, come on, open your mouth and let's just fill this place in a minute let's just pray that we will wait until we will stay at the altar until we have seen a move of God until we have seen a revival in the mighty name of Jesus Rekalabayande rebo sikana mayande reba shekayande rebo 
Lord, that your power, that your spirit will operate in us in the name of Jesus. That in this day, in this generation, even the generations to come, we will see the move of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we are here, Lord. Yes, Jesus. We want to see a move. A move in our generation, Lord. We want to be sparked for power. That, Lord, we will be ignited, oh God. That even where we've been complacent, Lord, that you will take us back to the altar in the name of Jesus. That we will let go of every sin that so easily entangles. We will throw off every weight that takes us back. But, Lord, we will seek you, oh God. And you will show unto us great and mighty things that we know nothing about. And in our day, we declare, we shall see the move of God. We thank you, Lord, because you will fill us with your presence, O God. You will fill us with your spirit, O Jehovah. We will burn for you, O God, wherever you place us, Lord. We will burn for you, O God. The fire of God will be burning in us, O God. Oh, yes, Lord, this is our prayer. So we thank you, Lord. Because we know you're doing it, oh Jesus. We thank you because you're coming through for us, oh God. We thank you because we will see that move, oh God. Like in the days past, oh God. We will see it happening in Sitamburuburu. We will see it happening in Eastlands. We will see it happening across the nation of Kenya. Lord, we thank you, oh God. Because indeed we are sparked for power. And we are lacking in zeal. We are not lacking in zeal, oh God. But we are excited for the things of God because we long for you, oh God. We know great and much things are ahead of us, oh God. So be glorified and be magnified in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We need your food. And we need your food. of these men and women, boys and girls, young men, young ladies in Sitamburuburu on fire in the mighty name of Jesus. May the hearts of your people be responsive to your word, but also to obey, oh God. We pray that, Father, there will be such a move that miracles will happen because you're moving amongst us. The signs and wonders will happen because you're moving amongst us. The souls of men and women will be saved because you are moving amongst us, oh God. And this afternoon we respond in obedience and pray, Lord, move amongst us, oh God. Therefore receive the praise and the glory for speaking to your people. And in Jesus' name we give you a celebration and a shout of praise. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We receive it and we obey. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Indeed, may you go and do as the Holy Spirit has spoken to you this afternoon. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you, Reverend Carol, for such a powerful message. May the name of the Lord be glorified. 
Yes, you can celebrate our pastor. Amen. And you can give the King of Kings a loud of applause. Amen. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us to be faithful, to obey. Because it is one thing to hear, it's another thing to do what he requires of us. Amen. As we close our eyes and, and come to the tail end of this service, I have to give an opportunity to somebody that might be saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. Every head bowed in the presence of the Lord. There is no spark without receiving Jesus. The beginning point is a relationship with the Lord. Are you there and you want to, give, to make a decision for the Lord this afternoon? By the show of your right hand, I'll see you wherever you are. You came to this service and you're saying, I need Jesus in my life. I need Jesus in my life. Is there anybody that, like that in this service? Anybody that would want to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior? On my left and on my right. And Father, one more time, we are grateful for your word. We pray in Jesus' name that this word will become life and flesh and a reality in our lives. And as we go out into the week, may your spirit nudge us. May your spirit pursue us and may we be faithful. And Lord, that your name will be glorified in our lives and through our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first time visitors, if you're here and this is your very first time to be here at Sitam Purupuru, by the show of your right hand or you just come, you, you lifted your hand when the moderators were mentioning, just come. Just come. We'll receive you on behalf of the Sitam Purupuru leadership. We just want to share a cup of Kenyan chai with you. Sitam Purupuru, let's appreciate our first time visitors and encourage them. Anybody that came for the very first time to sit up Buru Buru. Am I seeing? Yes, yes, they are coming. Anybody else? Anybody else that is here for the very first time? Yes, they are coming. Just appreciate them as they join me here. Amen amazing many of them keep coming we we love and appreciate visitors we are grateful to god that he led you to sit on Buru Buru today and what do we tell them again church for a church has come to an abrupt end and just in case you are looking for a place of worship we are inviting you to adopt this place where you are seated and become part of this community. We are a very loving community. The Lord bless you. But if you are just looking and, and just coming to visit and see what we do here, but you have your congregation, we send you with greetings to your pastors, your members there. The Lord bless you. Let's appreciate our first time visitors. Amen. And on my right, there is a lady in blue jacket on my right, which is your left. And there, that lady will go with you. That's our welcome team. They will share with you a cup of tea and we'll be able to know you a little more. And we thank God for every last one of you. May the Lord bless your lives even as you go and have that cup of tea. Amen. The Lord bless you. Let's appreciate them as they go with the welcome team. Again, this is our youth. This is what? Let's appreciate our young people again. Amen. And for those young at heart, please make sure that you also plug in one way or the other. You can pray for the services. You can engage and pray and release your young people. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon your lives. May the Lord conquer for you all your battles and may he lift a standard against every scheme of hell and may he bless the labor of your work this coming week and the days to come in Jesus name and now may the grace Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore amen and surely goodness and mercy shall follow us 
all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you.